So today we're going to talk about even more evidence, and actually really exciting evidence, for the existence of the mysterious cosmic web, in this case from a very very famous galactic cluster, the cluster you see right here, known as the Coma Cluster. And this time the scientists were able to discover the evidence for this cosmic web inside the cluster by using a somewhat intriguing method. And so let's discuss this new study and of course the cluster itself in a little bit more detail, but also briefly talk about the idea of cosmic web and what we know about it so far. And so first of all, when it comes to this mysterious cosmic web, it's always been predicted to exist based on various simulations, but it's really only in the last few years that we started to find actual physical evidence through various observations involving different types of unusual phenomena. And for the most part, the web itself is believed to be everywhere. It's believed to be a really large structure going through the entire universe, responsible for basically delivering gas and a lot of other matter, including dark matter, through the entire universe. And so all of the galaxies and all of the massive objects we have are usually located inside the web and very often on the intersection of various galactic filaments. But in between these filaments, we usually get slightly emptier space that we normally refer to as the galactic voids. And we've actually discussed the so-called local void in one of the recent videos in the description. But in the last few years, researchers realized that we can actually use a lot of different objects, such as very powerful quasars, to start detecting this web as the light from the quasars passes through them, changing the light just a little bit. With the alternative method relying on the extremely bright galaxies with very active black holes in the middle that would essentially serve as a kind of a flashlight illuminating the gas around them, thus revealing the cosmic web in a slightly different way. And so a few of these studies started to reveal the gas in various different ways, basically confirming the existence of this very strange web. And one of the most recent studies did something a little bit different. It actually used one of the most powerful X-ray telescopes, even revealing the web in the X-ray light. You can actually learn about all of these recent discoveries from that video in the description. And so in essence, the predictions started to come true. This structure seemed to really exist, and it seemed to do exactly what we expected to do. Move all types of matter around the universe, focusing all of it in certain points that become intersections and usually form extremely massive galactic clusters. And quite a few of these massive clusters have been known to us for a very long time. And one of the most famous ones is the Coma Cluster. Here's roughly what it looks like if you were to see some of the galaxies in the middle. And this is actually the cluster that became famous back in 1933. This is when the iconic researcher, Fritz Zwicky, measured the velocities of some of the galaxies in the cluster, realizing that they were actually moving way faster than they should be moving around one another. And he actually proposed that, okay, something unusual is probably holding them together, preventing them from flying apart. And so back then he proposed that these galaxies seem to be held together by some kind of a dunkel materie, dark matter. So this was literally the birth of the idea for the dark matter, and it all started with the Coma Cluster. The cluster containing nearly 1000 different galaxies that move and orbit around a central region, but do so at a much faster velocity than they should be doing if there was nothing but regular matter. And so here the calculations show that 90% of everything seems to be this mysterious dark matter. At the moment it's impossible to explain this in pretty much any other way. But because this is such a massive and such a large cluster, and it's approximately 300 million light years away from us, it's actually somewhat difficult to visualize this with various telescopes, simply because it's too big in the night skies. Or in other words, it's a little bit too spread out. And so for example, some of the more famous telescopes, such as the Hubble telescope, are just unable to cover everything and can only study individual parts of this cluster, making the observations somewhat challenging. But certain telescopes, like the Japanese Subaru telescope, can actually do so by using wide field lens. They can technically capture the entire cluster if they look at it for a long enough time. And so in one of the recent studies, that's pretty much what the scientists did. They wanted to find out a little bit more about the cluster, and specifically they wanted to discover the overall distribution of mass the distribution of dark matter, and basically visualize this in a slightly different manner. Now interestingly, like a lot of other massive superclusters, this one tends to have a lot of really bright galaxies in the middle, in this case 10 really bright galaxies that are technically visible with even a simple telescope. The two brightest and most famous ones are NGC 4889 and NGC 4874. And the thing is, with a lot of these really massive clusters, 
Because there is so much interaction with other galaxies, most galaxies become disturbed over time and do not end up as spiral galaxies. Most of them actually end up as elliptical galaxies, like the ones right here. And so there is only a very small number of spiral galaxies located on the outskirts of the cluster where there is not as much galactic interaction. But in the middle, in the center, the interaction is so strong that it even strips larger galaxies of a huge amount of gas. Here's one of these rare spiral galaxies basically losing its gas through the process known as ram pressure stripping. But naturally such a large number of galaxies and basically so much mass in the middle of this cluster will also be producing very very powerful gravitational lensing effects. The effect that is usually the strongest inside some of these most massive clusters. Here's actually an example of what a typical galaxy would look like if it passed behind the cluster and how its light would be transformed in the process. And so we know that coma cluster is also producing these effects, but because the overall distribution of mass in this case is not well understood, here one of the goals for the recent study was to basically create a slightly better mass and lensing map showing us how the mass is distributed inside of this massive object. And the result from the study created something like this. This basically shows us an overall mass distribution around this really massive cluster. But then more importantly, they were able to work out the lensing effects inside the cluster, creating a slightly better lensing map. In the process, spotting the much denser filaments formed by dark matter, in many cases stretching for millions of light years, with the overall visualization of all of this resembling something like this. And so this is actually the first ever visualization of the cosmic web that focuses on gravitational lensing effects as opposed to any kind of specific light. With this image also presenting us with the largest strands seen so far, millions and millions of light years across. And though some of the past images usually relied on hydrogen gas and the interaction of the gas with something else, in this case this was just seen by detecting minute changes in light through gravitational lensing. With this image specifically, showing us how this filament seems to align with various famous galaxies. Or essentially showing us how this dark matter filament seems to be attached to the entire coma cluster. And this of course doesn't just provide even more evidence for the mysterious dark matter, it also shows us how it sort of stretches across the entire universe, basically creating this fundamental structure we refer to as the cosmic web. And more importantly, confirming that, just as predicted, massive galactic clusters seem to grow at intersections of various filaments that very often extend for millions of light years, just as predicted by various models and as shown by various very complex computer simulations. Although in this case, this was pure observational evidence. Which of course is really important for testing a lot of other theories and other propositions, but also providing us with even more instruments to try to visualize the universe in different ways. And actually intriguingly, not so long ago, the researchers working with the James Webb were actually looking at this other really famous galactic cluster known as the Pandora Cluster, and they used the gravitational lensing effects from this cluster to uncover something visible right here. This turned out to be a baby cluster, a protocluster of seven different really massive galaxies that existed approximately 13.2 billion years ago. And based on the simulations and calculations, the researchers believe that this is actually exactly how the coma cluster began as well. The overall mass distribution and the overall interaction of galaxies in this case basically shows us how these clusters seem to develop over time and how they eventually form huge structures containing thousands of different galaxies interacting with one another inside a very large intersection of the cosmic web. So definitely some cool stuff and really intriguing new evidence for the existence of this very mysterious structure. But as discussed previously, there have been other observations in the X-rays, in the optical light, and even using reflection from the gas that you can learn more about in some of the videos in the description. And so until future discoveries or until we have even more confirmation for this mysterious structure, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying a wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.